Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote up a quick uh, diary uh, this morning that's sort of a little bit based around a new feature we are actually playing with, and that feature is displaying newly hit uh, URLs from our web application Honeypots. So any URL that we haven't seen in the past is sort of displayed there. And what sort of stuck out a little bit uh, yesterday actually was a particular host that was scanning the internet, it looked like, for web shells. Web shells, of course, are associated with many recent compromises, whether it be SolarWinds or whether it be many of the Microsoft Exchange server compromises that we have seen recently. This particular actor, well, uh, is such a sort of parasitically trying to find pre-installed web shells and then trying to exploit them and apparently looking for things like, for example, default passwords that are often used with these web shells. Total of 28,454 requests from this single IP address over the day on Monday, hitting about 40 honeypots that are supplying us with data. And as usual, if you're interested in running a honeypot, well, check our site. Of course, the big news item today was also the Amazon outage, AWS uh, US East 1 had an outage lasting most of the afternoon here, Eastern time affecting numerous services, also some SANS services were affected by that outage. One particular hit uh, users, I think uh, somewhat by surprise was that uh, their CloudFront service was affected by this. CloudFront is particular kind of designed uh, for resiliency and uh, trying to sort of you know, balance loads uh, globally, but apparently that service will go down if US East 1 goes down. Other important services going down were, for example, internet controlled cat litter boxes. And cloud code security company Spectral published research showing how many Apache Kafka servers are being exposed open to the internet due to the install of a management user interface called CafDrop. Apache Kafka is a messaging queue, so a lot of APIs and such are using Kafka and an attacker having access uh, to the system may gain insight into these messages or also be able to disrupt them. The problem here is not Kafka, you have Kafka properly installed, but by installing this UI, which does not really provide any authentication, you're fully exposing the Kafka instance that the UI provides access to. The recommendation by Spectral is uh, to either take down CAFDROP UI or deploy it behind uh, some kind of proxy like Nginx or such to provide some better authentication access control to the system. Let me have a new remote code execution vulnerability in Windows 10 that at least is not completely patched yet. The problem here are MS Office command URIs. Uh, this is a URL schema that's being linked to a particular handler in Windows 10, Windows 11 to start uh, Office uh, applications. Now, there should be some kind of warning to the user before the application is started, but uh, the blog post details detailed how, for example, with application like Microsoft Teams, uh, Office uh, program could be started, arguments could be supplied to then execute arbitrary commands. Lots of details in the blog posted by Positive Security. So uh, this is an ongoing issue and looks like it's rather straightforward to exploit this vulnerability. Now, researchers at the Ruhr University Bochum uh, did publish a paper outlining a number of different techniques that can be used to leak cross-site information in various web browsers. The 
problem with web browsers is that they're trying to keep different origins apart from each other. So if you're loading to different pages that are not related, one page doesn't really know what the other page loaded. But of course, they're still using the same software. And as a result, there are some side channel attacks that are possible to deduct what's basically going on on a different website on a different origin that may also be loaded in the browser. This can in turn lead to vulnerabilities like, for example, cross-site request forging that are actually then inherent to the browser and not necessarily due to weaknesses in a particular web application. For more details, uh, refer to the paper and the link uh, can be found in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.